Welcome to Wondering Wednesday. Wondering on Wednesday. That's right. It is your favorite hosts, Mary Ellen and Joe, and we are so excited to answer questions for you on Wednesdays. You can send us all of your burning points and miles questions, whether it's 101, 201, questions about a specific trip itinerary. We're going to pick one each week and feature it on the show in a little tiny bite-sized episode. You can send your questions to Mary Ellen and Joe at wonderlandonpoints.com. You can DM us. You can send them to us through the Facebook group. We want to hear from you. So let's dive in. Let's go. Welcome back to Wondering Wednesday. We are so excited to be here answering all of your points and miles questions. And this week we have a good one. Why shouldn't you be scared of annual fees? Because Mary Ellen, is this not the case? When people come to me so often. They're like, I don't want an annual fee card. I'm not going to pay to have a credit card. And we really want you consider, we really want you to consider that it is sometimes worth it to have a card with an annual fee. And we're going to tell you why right now. Get into it, Mary Ellen. A hundred percent. Most of the great cards that have transferable points, and I'll explain that, for travel have annual fees. Okay. Most of the cards, not every card, but a lot of them that give you the ability to transfer points to airlines, to transfer points to hotels, they have annual fees. But do not be afraid because the banks know we don't want to just pay for a credit card. They offer things to offset those annual fees. So when you're applying for a card, and perhaps the Amex Gold. That's one of my favorites, but it has a hefty annual fee, over $300 for the annual fee. And I know for some people, that is really mind-blowing. But every dime of that $300 and more can be accounted for with credits that you receive if you earn that card. So maybe Mm. it is dining credits through Resi. Maybe it is Grubhub or Uber credits. There are ways that you can offset the card. So you get the huge perk of being able to transfer your points and thus getting more value for your points. Plus, you get to offset that annual fee with some fun credits throughout the year. Absolutely. And just keep in mind, when you are transferring your points and cashing them in for flights, for points, you are saving so much money out of pocket. Even if you were not getting all of these credits to offset the annual fee, in my estimation, getting free flights and hotels In exchange for buying my groceries, which is specific to the Amex Gold because it gives you four times points on groceries, and that is a huge one for our family, I would pay 300 something dollars a year because the amount of travel that I'm getting in return for those points from my basic spending far, far outweighs the cost. So I know when you're first getting into this, it's like, why would I ever pay to have a credit card? That's insanity. And my mindset was exactly like that at the beginning too. But we are here to tell you it is worth it. Almost all of our favorite cards have annual fees. And the one that I'm thinking of that was the most recent for me is the Capital One Venture. And it has a pretty manageable annual fee. It's $95 a year for that annual fee. But the coolest thing about that card is that I'm going to get global entry or pre-check. Global entry includes pre-check for anybody who's new to this. Um, Pre-check doesn't include global entry. I still haven't decided what direction I'm going to go on that, but that is a tangent. That card comes with a credit for that. And that is that costs more than $100 to get either global entry or pre-check. So I've paid the annual fee, but I'm getting something that actually costs more than the annual fee itself. And then there's all the additional benefits that come after that with the sign-up bonuses and the travel portal credits that I got with this card and the ability to purchase a race for trip bookings or Airbnbs the way the Capital One card does. And if you have questions about 
specific cards. We have deep dives on all of them. Just go back through our episode list and we will dig into them in long form. Yeah, remember that especially the first year of a card, there are some credit cards, especially those with annual fees, that you want to reevaluate every year whether it's worth it to keep that card. But the first year of a card, it's always going to be worth it because yeah. the reason you're signing up for the card typically is because there's a pretty nice sign-up bonus that you're getting once you spend, say, $3,000 in the first three months, whatever the terms are. But that sign-up bonus, that more than covers the cost of the annual fee. And so even if you didn't have the extra perks and the offers and the credits that you get, the first year of a card, you're pretty much always coming out well ahead because of the value that you get in that sign-up bonus. The other thing that we will dive into in another episode of our Wednesday Wonders is retention offers. Sometimes after you've had the card for a year, they, instead of initially just paying the annual fee as it's posted to your account, you can ask the bank for a retention offer and they can either um, lower the annual fee for you or offer you more points, kind of like another mini sign-up bonus. So the annual fees are there, but between your credits, between your sign-up bonus, retention offers, there are all kinds of ways to lower that annual fee. That is so true. And we are going to have full Wednesday Wonder episodes on not only the retention offer, but what is a sign-up bonus? Because I am sure that some people have that question, especially when you see the word sub floating around and you're like, what does that mean? So we are going to dig into all of this in upcoming episodes. Look out for those. Or if you're listening to this way in the future, calm around in there. I'm sure it's there for you to find right now. We have no idea when you're listening to this, but wherever you're from and whenever you're from, we're grateful for you. And this is what we were wondering about today. We'll see you next time. Bye guys. If you enjoyed this show today, please consider writing us a review or clicking five stars wherever you listen to your podcasts. And please subscribe and follow along so that you never miss an episode. You can follow the podcast on Instagram or YouTube at Wonderland on Points Podcast. You can find me on Instagram at Family Travel for the Win with the number four. And you can find me on Instagram at Points to Wonderland. If you're thinking about getting a new Travel Rewards credit card, consider using the links in our show notes. Using our links helps to support us and keep our podcast going so we can provide you with all the latest tips and tricks when it comes to traveling on points. And if you aren't sure which card is right for you, shoot us an email at wonderlandonpoints at gmail.com and we would be happy to walk you through a free card consultation. That's also a great place to send us all of your comments and questions. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you here next time.